Hey, how's your weekend going? Mine? Pretty good, thanks for asking. Though it is getting better, now that I get to talk penny stocks with you. <laughs> I'm John Zadar, I'm the host of On Top and Hot, and this is the weekend of June 2nd. Now we're going to do what we always do. We're going to focus in on some hot OTC and penny stocks. That is to say, any stock under 5 bucks, regardless of what market it's on. And when I say I'm looking for stocks for potential, what I'm saying is I'm looking for stocks that have hot charts. That's why I do my research first, without looking at the news, without looking at filings. I just go looking at charts. I pull up my favorite penny stock scan, and then I just start going through the charts. I don't even know what company I'm looking at. I don't even glance. I'm just looking for heat in the chart. I'm looking for a breakout setup or lots of volume coming in or a long, hard surge that's been running for a while. Then I go looking for my catalyst. Then I check the news and the filings. Not before. Why? I have seen lots of big dynamic news hit and the charts do nothing. Why? Because the chart was poop. It stunk. It was ice cold and nobody wants to play a cold chart. So the big news went to waste. So I have found by finding charts with heat, it only takes a small catalyst, even a stale catalyst to get it to move. So these are the sort of stocks I'm bringing you. Stocks that have heat in the charts and a reason to move. First one we're going to take a look at is ticker VRSSF. This is Versus AI Inc. They just recently changed their name. It was just Versus. Now it's Versus AI. That give you any indication what they're into? <laughs> Actually, they've been into it for a while. They're just now focusing more in on it since it's becoming a big deal. And it is going to make a lot of money. So VRSSF, she finished today at $2.09 and just a smidge over 24% gains. Now she is on the best tier of the OTC, the QX. This is the best tier because they not only audit their financials, they give us all the information they got on the company. They give us so much information they could easily be on the major exchange if they chose to or could. Some companies can't get on the major exchange like Heineken, L'Oreal, EasyJet, Adidas. Why? Because they're foreign companies, don't have an office in the States, and you're not allowed to be on the major exchange without an office here in the States. So the best they can do, the best is the QX on the OTC. So this is the best here. It is the most trustworthy. Versus also has that verified profile and transfer agent verified. We like this. More verified information. Being done behind the scenes, great when you're in a stock on the OTC for a long hold. And we got a bonus here. Penny stock exempt. The definition reads, you have to be in business for three to five years, have millions of dollars of assets during that time, and kept up with your financials. Ding, 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 ding. We have a winner. That proves to us they're reliable. You don't have to think of them as a risky startup company. So regardless of what their price is or what market they're on, they are not legally a penny stock. But we're going to look at it anyways. So what does Versus do? Well, as I said, they are into AI. They tell us here that Versus is building the next generation spatial operating system and applications that deliver impact across the wide array of industries from logistics and supply chain to transportation, mobility, and climate. Now, when you jump on over here to their website, this is versus.ai. I really like this picture. Oh, that's a cool picture. This here, this is just a video screen, but they make the picture look like it's going in. And up here at the top of this building, they got a holographic hologram advertisement just spinning in the air and you got all your electric vehicles your drones and of course your recycle bins but back to where we were at they've got two products and they are ai related cosm this is an operating system ai operating system like microsoft windows or macintosh but it's ai I'd like to be able to explain it to you, but the best I can say, it is a broader spectrum of information. <laughs> we haven't seen it yet, so I really don't know what it's all about, but it is out there. Operating systems based on artificial intelligence. The other product they have is Wayfinder. They tell us that this optimizes warehouse picking, slotting, and capacity by bridging the gap between digital systems and the physical operations. 
So they're fixing antiquated systems with warehousing and moving products, bringing them into the new age, if you will. Make them streamline, more efficient, more profitable. So what was the relative volume around the company today? Whoa, we've got almost double, virtually almost double, from 455,000 to almost 1.1 million. There are people watching it, but I knew that. The charts don't lie. Share structure for Versus. Outstanding share count is 62 million. They tell us here restricted shares. These are the shares owned by the insiders, the management and such. They've only got about 5 million shares. Kind of strange. And that leaves 57 million. So that should be our float. Pay no mind to this because this is over a year old. So I'm going to believe 57 million is our float, which isn't a low float, but it isn't a bad float at all. Financials for Versus. What a jump. Wow. From 2021 to 2022, we went from $97,000 to $2.7 million. Yeah, we know it's thousands and millions because we got to put three zeros on any of the numbers down here. Whew, what a jump. Quarterly? Well, she was doing about 300, 350,000 for the last four quarters. And then in December, she jumped darn near doubling from 278 to 560,000. And she is due right now. I'm surprised she's not late. She is due for the next quarterly report. And hopefully it is going to show growth in revenues. Taking a quick look at that balance sheet. All right. They have total assets here, about $9 million and six and a half million of that is in the bank and their liabilities is 2.3 million so they are at a three to one ratio with assets over liabilities pretty good disclosures we've got no disclosures to look at over here but i do want to dive into their most recent quarterly report you never know what you can find in these there's lots of information and i've scanned through this and i found a few things i want to point out We've already looked at their assets. Uh, Eight million is where they say they are at the end of December and their liabilities were 2.4, which is real good. Revenues, now this was a bit interesting. This is the three months ended December 31st of 2022 and 2021. Well, this is the nine months ended the same period. Here we doubled 278,000 from last year to 560 this year. Well, <laughs> look at this one, nine months, we cut in half. We went from 2.4 million to 1.2 million. Hmm. So she came down over the year and it looks like she's starting to climb back up. Another number here that caught my attention. It may not mean anything to you. I'm just spilling my beans here. This is one of their expenses. Travel and meals. For nine months, they spent just shy of three quarter million dollars on travel and meals. This is supposed to be for management. How many people are they taking? What sort of restaurants are they going to? Luxury cruises? I mean, come on, three quarter million dollars in nine months for travel and eating. Wow, doesn't really much matter. I just had to point it out. The other thing I can show you here is their subsidiary list. They've got eight subsidiaries. Most of them are in the USA, a couple of them are in Canada, and they have one in the Netherlands. And I do believe that's everything we have. Yep, so let's go take a look at that news now. Well, they got lots of news over here, and we're not going to dive into it all, but I will headline it for you. We've only gone back here to February 15th. The company partners with SVT Robotics to expand the application of AI in industrial environments. I guess you can be expecting robots in a factory near you. The company announces next generation AIA, General Intelligent Agent. They're creating their own types of AI and they are patenting it. This is their patent filing on the 24th of May. And from what I was able to gather in a nutshell, it's a long news press. In a nutshell, it sounds to me like they're saying, don't give an AI too much to work with. Give it a narrow circumference, a specific task, and it will really do an excellent job there. And they are patenting that concept. Imagine that. Another piece of news they got here, Versus and Simwell partnered to enhance digital twin simulations with Cosmos, their AI operating system. 
I do not know what this digital twin simulations is. As I said, I do not read every piece of news, but this one sounds interesting by all means. At the end of uh, March, they changed their name. At the end of April, they got themselves two and a half million dollars from exercising some warrants and options, some more money for the bank. And then halfway through May, the company expands autonomous drone governance infrastructure powered by COSM to Milan, Italy. So they are working abroad. They are now working with drones with this COSM operating system. There's a lot going on here. I just don't understand, folks. First, I thought mining was tough to understand. And then these biotechs with all their medical jargon. Now we got AI. Oh my God, you got to have a degree just to read the news from these companies. And that last piece of news that came out, well, actually it wasn't the last. The last one was the CEO. He is delivering an address at the LD Micro Invitational and it's already happened. That was on the 26th. And though there is no current news right now, no new filings right now, the charts are on fire right now. No second guessing where we're at. This is my free trading platform, Think or Swim. I got it when I signed up at TD Ameritrade. And that was free too. <laughs> so we are looking at Versus AI Inc. This is the sticker VRSSF. And of course, we're going to start with a six-month, four-hour view. This is actually a great chart. We got a low bubble back here in November of 39 cents, and it has been growing ever since. Ever since November, it has been on an uptrend. Whether slow and steady or wild and fast, it has been growing. And Friday, she hit a high of $2.16. You can see the volume has been there for a long time, steadily increasing, and right now, it's very strong. Now, I don't know if this is a coincidence, but that 200-day SMA appeared, the chart lit up just got crazy and hasn't stopped. And the oscillators, right now, they're on fire. Everything is pushing up, RSI is clear up at 75. Everything looks really, really good. Now, just to give you a little bit of perspective here, I'm gonna throw up a regression channel. These are easy, just poke one day and poke the other day. It'll put it in the right place for you. Well, as you can see, she has not only been running uphill, trying to get out, but she has broke out. Right now, she has broke out. She isn't down here. She's way up there at 209, right there. Now, I don't expect her to just keep going up. Charts go up and down. So I would expect at least for her to come back and bounce off the top of this channel. But she could come back into the channel too. There's no second guessing that much. Take a look at our 20-day, one-hour view. So you got your low bubble back here of $1.15 right in on that channel and the 200 and then she launched up here, hit her head, meant to get through and has broke through. Osculators still on fire. All of them are pushing up and our RSI is at 78 right now. Five day, five minute. Looking grand. Low bubble, $1.47, high bubble, $2.16, hitting her head on that channel. She wanted out. She got out fell back to her 20 and she is launching right now. And look at that volume spike at the end of the day. And all of our oscillators, even on the five minute, are still on fire. We're still in the overbought on the RSI at 77. This looks good to me, folks. She has a lot of things going on with her right now, but the chart just has so much steam. You gotta put it on your watch list. I don't know what's gonna happen to her, but uh, if you miss out, it won't be my fault. Let's take a look at another penny stock from the OTC, also beginning with V, just a coincidence. This is sticker VPLM, VoIPPAL.com. Now, we looked at this company before, back in June, July of last year, and we're looking at it for the same reason. She is involved in one of the largest lawsuits I've ever seen. She is suing companies like Twitter, Amazon, Facebook, T-Mobile, AT&T, because they believe their technology, their patents are being infringed upon. They've got something like 27 to 51 patents, all based around VoIP technology. VoIP technology is voice over internet protocol. Whenever you are talking to somebody online, actually hearing their voice, that's their technology. And everybody's using it, but nobody's paying them. So they want a payday, and they've taken it to court. 
Now, there hasn't been any fresh news since January, which is why we're looking at it now. The charts look good, but I see a void in news. When you're suing that many people, things have to be happening. So I'm expecting a piece of news any time now, honestly. So that's why we're looking at this. VPLM, she finished today just under 7.5 cents and just about 18.5% gains. They're on the middle tier of the OTC, the QB. This is the better tier because they have to audit their financials. And they've got that verified profile and transfer agent verified, so they really look secure. They also have independent directors. The only reason I know that you need independent directors is for uplisting. You have to have had them to uplist from the pink to the QB. And if they want to go to the NASDAQ or the New York Stock Exchange, they're going to need them then as well. And they're still sitting there, so who knows what's going to go on. So I've already told you what this company does. Let's take a look at that relative volume. We had a little drop today. We went from 6.2 million down to 5.4 million. Share structure for VPLM is not a pretty picture. <laughs> not at all. We got 1.1 billion, so I'm presuming, in the float. That's a huge float. It's somewhere around a billion. Nothing to get excited about. Financials for VPLM. Again, nothing to get excited about. They've got nothing. There's absolutely no money here. And worse yet, when you jump into their balance sheet, they're poor. <laughs> they are. They're poor. They got $305,000 in the bank. They've got 675,000 in assets, and they've got 158,000 in liabilities. So yeah, they're ahead of the game. They do have more than they owe, but not by much. Let's take a look at those disclosures. As you can see, we have got a ton of Form 4s down here. Form 4s are filed whenever the insiders, the management of the company, buy or sell shares of their own company stock. And we've got a lot of them here. And every single one of these Form 4s were filed May of this year. But the transactions were not May of this year. Some of these transactions go back to 2014, 2020, 2021, 2022. Why they waited so long to file, I have no clue. They should be put in in a timely manner. Now, I'm only going to focus in on the most current Form 4s up here. I want you to see what is going on. You open this up, in this corner up here, you're going to see who is doing the buying or the selling. This is Barbara Baggio. She just happens to be the wife of the CEO, and she's been a busy lady. She has been buying and selling, and I want you to pay attention to this lady because she knows what she's doing. She bought 10 million shares here at 005, a half a penny. Then she turned around and started selling them. She started selling 300,000 shares at 10 times plus the price. Over 1,000% gains. Look at the money this woman is making. Then you look at the next Form 4. This one came out April of this year. Again, it is the wife of the CEO, and she is still selling. She is selling at $0.03, cents, uh, $0.04. Cents. She's making money on that $10 million purchase at a half a penny. This one is May 17th of this year. It is still the wife of the CEO, and she's still selling. Now she's up to $0.09, cents, $0.10. Cents. Oh, my God, folks. You're talking 2,000% gains. I would watch this lady. Whenever she buys stock, I would buy it, too, because she knows what she's doing. She's making a lot of money right now. And one more. This came from May 19th, and it's still the wife of the CEO. She is selling thousands and thousands of these shares, 286,000 shares at eight cents, which she bought at a half a penny, 1,600% gains there. So this woman is making all kinds of money. I'm sure her husband is quite proud of her. All right, let's take a look at that news. Taking a look at that news. There is a lot of it here and we can't go through it all. I have only gone back to June of 2021, and there is news all the way back to 2013. But this is enough to show you what's going on and where we're at right now. So they tell us here that the company filed for new patent infringement lawsuits against Facebook, WhatsApp, Google, Amazon, Apple, AT&T, Verizon, and T-Mobile, as well as Samsung and Hawaii. 
They're suing anybody and everybody, not because they want to, but because they've been robbed. Anybody using voice over internet protocol, any company out there that you can hear voices coming through their website, they are using VoIP's technology and they owe VoIP. And all of these companies are scrambling. None of them want to go to court and get sued. So they're doing everything they can to slow it down, get it dismissed, change venue from one state to another. And everything these companies submit is being denied. VoIP is getting everything they want right now. So they tell us here that VoIP files application for temporary restraining order. VoIP takes positive steps towards remaining in the Western District of Texas. And they are. They're winning every one of these motions. Judge rules in favor of the company in case against Richard Kipling. VoIP receives favorable claim construction ruling in its patent infringement cases against Amazon, Verizon, and T-Mobile. A claim construction is you having to prove you have the right to sue these people. And they've gotten through that with flying colors. Then they tell us here in July of 2022, the court ruled in favor of the company denying Amazon's request for reconsideration. The Western District of Texas denies Amazon's motions to transfer both cases filed by VoIP. Nobody can get their way except VoIP. To date, VoIP Pal has successfully defeated 16 IPR challenges against eight of its patents by Google, Apple, and AT&T, and Unified Patents. There's another company right there. Now, these IPRs, these are breaking down the patents to their little itty-bitty pieces to see if it is right. And the court said no to Google. We're not going to break down the patents and examine them that closely. We see that VoIP is right and you're wrong. And none of these big companies are liking it. Now, think about it, folks. The money they could get here is billions and billions of dollars. The company's not making any money right now, are they? They haven't got much in the bank. They're poor. So this is a huge, huge deal for the company. And I'm expecting a new piece of news to come out soon. The last couple of pieces of news here read, the company receives favorable claim construction ruling in its patent infringement case against Samsung. The company's patent infringement lawsuit against Amazon remains in the Western District of Texas. And their last piece of news, which came out in January, the court in the Western District of Texas has lifted the stay in the company's case against Amazon in Waco, asserting the RBR continuation patent. There's lots of patents being infringed, and every single one of them look to be favorable for VoIP. Every decision coming down is in VoIP's favor. So I'm expecting another piece of news real soon here. And any one of these companies could end up being charged, found guilty, have to pay this company. And what if more than one? What if all these companies have to pay? This is exciting, folks. Now, we don't know when this is going to happen. It's been in the courts for a long time, 10 years. But we're getting to the point where things should start happening. And the charts are hot. So one more nice piece of news. We could see a rip on these charts. Let's go take a look at those charts. Not a bad looking chart for VPLM. She is in an uptrend, though she's got a lot of volatility. This is a six month, four hour chart for Voight, pal. We got our low back here in September of one penny. She wasn't doing anything until January when all this volume came in. She went from a penny and a half to a high in February of 11 and a half cents. That is like 700% run right there. Then it fell all the way back down to the 200, hung out down here for a few weeks, had another surge of volume come in, pushing the price well over 100% gains again. She dipped, she ripped, has a lot of volatility going on, but right now she is at that 50-day SMA, well above her 200-day SMA. But that's not all. If we use our Fibonacci, poke the bottom of the surge and the top of the surge, what we're looking for is for the price to get above the 50% mark right there. If the price can get above this, it has a stronger likelihood of rising rather than falling. But right now, that is exactly where it's at. It has gotten above that 50% mark on our Fibonacci and is at the 50-day SMA. This is a sweet, potent position, in my opinion.
Looking at our oscillators, they are weak, but they are recovering. The strength is coming back into the picture right now. Our MACD has a crossover and approaching the signal line just like our PPO. These two are very much alike. You read them the same. You want to get that blue line on top of the other line. And our RSI is rising from 40 to 54. So everything is looking really good here. Let's clear this drawing so we can get a nice view of our 20 day, one hour view. So she had a high here of about 10 and a half cents and lost almost 50% falling down to five and a half cents under the 200 day SMA here. Did some arguing with the 200 and right now she's winning that argument sitting on top of the 200 day SMA, bringing her nine day SMA with her and look, our 50 day SMA is right up underneath that 200 day SMA. When it crosses, that is called a golden cross. It is one of the strongest technicals on the charts, arguably, and lots of people are looking for that setup. Our oscillators. They're still in recovery mode. They're growing. We have that crossover happening on the PPO. We're crossing the signal line on our MACD and our RSI is now up to 63. Five day, five minute view. Lots of volatility. Goodness, look at that 50 day SMA. Look at that tight roll here and then almost an angle bend right there. Definitely a decisive point here. She decided to jump from the 50 clear up to the 200 and break it. Kept chipping at it until she got up on top. And right now she looks great. That 50 day SMA is crossing the 200 right now. Another golden cross. And I'm telling you, people put this as a search in their platforms looking for the 50 day to cross the 200. So even though she hasn't got any catalyst right now, VPLM hasn't had any news or filing since January. She's got lots of things happening, lots of companies she's suing, lots of court cases going on, lots of opportunities for news press to come out, and of course, lots of opportunities to make some big bucks. These are huge companies that could be, I don't know, paying billions of dollars, literally. Do your own DD, folks, but I'm telling you, I like VPLM. None of the courts have been judging against them on anything, so it's really looking good. So I'm not thinking of VPLM as a short hold. I'm thinking of getting into it and waiting for all this money to start pouring in. Doesn't that sound like a good thing to you? Got an exciting penny stock for you now, coming from the major exchange, the New York Stock Exchange. This is Sess. AI Corporation, ticker SES. Now I'm loving the chart. It is that perfect atypical breakout chart. The one that's very easy to recognize. You've got that 200 day SMA coming down steep, then leveling off. The price is far underneath it, starting to climb up with a lot of green bars, getting ready to slice through it and launch. That's what we've got going on here. What we need is a catalyst. Well, this company gives us a well-defined window of opportunity. In the news that just came out, they tell us that on June 26, something's going to happen. And that's why we're looking at this. She is set up and has a window of opportunity that we can catch. SCS, she finished today on Friday at $1.89 and almost 12% gains. So what does this company do? I know you thought they were an AI company. They're not. They tricked me too. SCS is a global leader in development and production of high performance lithium metal rechargeable batteries for electric vehicles and other applications. Founded in 2012, the company is an integrated lithium metal battery manufacturer with strong capabilities in material, cell, module, AI powered safety algorithms and recycling. Formerly known as Solid Energy Systems, SES is headquartered in Boston and has operations in Singapore, Shanghai, and Seoul. Now, when they say operations, they're not referring to satellite offices over there so they can claim they're there. No, they have huge manufacturing facilities already built up. Now, they're not pulling in any revenues yet. You're going to see that when we look at their financials, but they've invested a lot of money into it, have a lot of assets, and they're all set up and ready to go into business. So what was the relative volume around the company today? Considering she had no direct catalyst, ah, she dropped a wee bit, about 37,000 shares, going from 900,000 down to 863,000 shares. Share structure for SCS, not too bad. Our outstanding share count is 306 million. 
Now, I did poke my head into Google. I was curious. We have a float of maybe 127 million. It is possible. Now, we normally don't look at the market cap. I know that's important to a lot of people. Here, the market cap is over a half a billion, 578 million. And the reason I point it out is it's part of the news that we have to consider as our catalyst. What is the financials for the company? Nothing. As I said, they've got no money coming in annually or quarterly, which is a little concerning considering that they're on the New York Stock Exchange. However, when you jump into their balance sheet annually, you can see here cash, they've got 106 million in the bank. We know it's millions because we've got to add three zeros to any of the numbers down here. But look here, total assets. They've got 440 million in total assets and just about 10% of that in liabilities. So they've got a lot of assets. They've got their facilities built. They've got a business they're ready to launch and they're getting ready to do that. But that's not the catalyst, it's something else. So looking at those disclosures, wow, we got a lot of them, don't we? All in May these came out and I haven't looked at all of them, I'll be honest. But I have looked at the most current ones. I'll let you look at the others. We have an 8K here. This simply announced their quarterly financial report that just came out. And if you're really interested in the company, don't go over to Google. Why waste your time going from site to site to site, article to article? Just jump into a 10Q. They have all the information about the company. That's what they're for. We've also got a couple of Form 4s here. They are sales from the insiders. Not big. You got a 10,000 share and a 37,000 share when they do own a lot of shares. So I got to presume that they're just paying the bills like the rest of us. Taking a look at that news, as I said, they've been working on building these manufacturing facilities in the other countries. A lot of the news has been based around that. And their quarterly results just came out. But the big piece of news is right here SES set to join Russell 3000 Index. Jumping into this news, they tell us that SES AI Corporation will be added to the Russell Index effective after the US market opens on June 26th. The annual Russell reconstitution captures the 4,000 largest US stocks as of April 28th, ranking them by total market capitalization. And we were at just over half a billion. No revenues, right? We got zero money, but we got a huge market cap. And that's going to get us into the Russell. Uh, Russell 3000, is it? Yeah, the Russell 3000, which also makes it now available for them to move to the Russell 2000 and the Russell 1000. Once you do that, it's like putting on a badge of honor. More people pay attention to you, and that in itself is going to be a strong catalyst, in my opinion. Now let me share the chart with you. And that, my friends, is the atypical breakout chart. Very easy to identify. This is ticker SES, six month, four hour view. You got a high bubble in this corner, $6.48, a long drawn out fall to May, where we hit $1.33. And right through this area, she pretty much just went flat, hanging around the 50 day SMA, waiting for the 200 day SMA to get close. Once it got close enough, she took opportunity. Boink, two days ago she took off, bound and determined to get to that 200. Not one red bar in there. Volume is consistent, strong, and steady. And our oscillators are on fire. All of them, every single one is pushing to the moon, and our RSI is clear up at 75 and on fire. The four hour chart looks good. Looking at that one hour, 20 day chart, this one's looking better. Our 200 day SMA came down and has leveled out and is flat. Actually, she's starting to curve up right now. You can see the price tried to break through it here, slid down just as little gradual hill, fell, got back up on top, got her footing, and she has launched on the nine day SMA, leaving all the other SMAs behind. She hit a high bubble here and she's had a little bit of pullback and bounce back. Osculators, all of them are still strong, pushing up, though they do show just a wee bit of cool off from the pullback off of that high bubble. Looking at that five day, five minute, it's just getting better and better. Low bubble in this corner, high bubble in that corner. 
on top of the 200-day SMA, actually pushed away and is now bouncing off of the 50-day SMA. And that's what she's just done. Hit her high, bounced off the 50, and she is up on top of her 20. This is all looking good. Now, the oscillators are a bit cool right now. I'll grant you that. But we're not looking for a run tomorrow. Matter of fact, we'd kind of be happy if this came back to the 200, which it very well could do. We've got three weeks. So we're looking for the price to actually fall so that we can get a better price because I'm believing the 26th or even a few days before that, we could see this thing start to run and she is in a good position. SES, for those who have a little bit of patience and foresight. Oh, I'm loving all three of the stocks I shared with you today. They've all got hot charts and reasons to move. Versus, this is an AI company, not a company using AI. Big difference. They've got their own AI products. They have their own patents for AI. This is a company I would like to play short and long. Then you've got VoIP. Holy cow, what a game they're playing. They are suing the pants off of some of the biggest corporations in the world. Facebook, Amazon, Samsung, WhatsApp, and it is left up to the courts to decide what the damages are going to be that they're going to pay VoIP. And it looks like they're probably going to get paid. How much? Billions and billions? Who knows? But it's an exciting play. Again, there could be bounces on every single news press. And if anything comes out with a judgment, you know it's going to the moon. And then we got SES. Perfect window of opportunity, June 26th. But I'm expecting it to start to rise before then. Heck, it's already rising now. All three of these stocks got something to offer, but do some more due diligence, folks. I'm just bringing you some of the information to get you interested. Remember, the more you know, the more you're going to grow. See ya.